The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the sounds of suspense to the fear you can hear. Welcome to the world of nightmarish probability, where the icy fear of the unknown can lead one down strange and terrifying paths. In our story, Alex Harper confronts the impossible, and the encounter produces a devastating effect. <laughs> mystery drama, The Edge of Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Saul Panitz and stars Patrick O'Neill. Meet Alex Harper, farmer. Right now his left arm is in a sling, heavily bandaged to protect the more than 20 stitches just a small accident on his tractor. First time in his 28 years as a farmer that he'd ever suffered more than a slight sprain or a minor bruise. It is a late August morning, an unreal sky, so blue it almost hurts the eyes to look at it. Even now, there is a promise that the cool dampness of the morning will soon yield to the stifling heat of the prairie sun. No matter what you say, I still don't think I ought to leave you alone. Who said I'm alone? You hear what Judy said, huh, Ace? <laughs> Can't you be serious for a second? Only because I think you should go. Now, we've been over this a dozen times. Even if something was to happen, I'd never forgive myself. Oh, what if, what if, what if the sky fell down, Chicken Little? Well, your arm, it hurts, doesn't it? Did I say so? Oh, whenever you get this way, sarcastic, you're covering up. You can't fool me. Take another pill. Another one and I'll be going around like a zombie. Oh, and I'll ask Doc Stevenson if he can give you something else. But I don't want something else. Now, you go on, get your annual checkup, do a little shopping if you like. But I still think I ought to be here. After last night. Oh, boy, last night. Last night I again. I am not a hysterical woman. I didn't say you were. Well, you thought so. Well, you get me up out of a sound sleep and insist that there are lights and noises. I know. I heard something last night. It wasn't a rabbit or a deer. There was a, a flashing light. <laughs> I'm not an idiot, and I haven't got that good imagination to make it all up. And now, I'll go. Ace, where are you? Come on, boy, now I'm in no mood to play games. All right, I'm going back to the house. Huh? Oh, behind the barn, eh? What you got cornered, a ten-foot rabbit? Or... Oh, there you are. Now, hey, hey, you did find something. I'm, I'm coming, Ace. All right, now, bring it to me. Come on, boy, give it here. Give it here, that's it. Good dog. Yeah. Hey, let's see what you discovered. Hmm. A bag. Looks just like a... Like Doc Stevenson's bag, only... It couldn't be his. This one's shiny new. It feels funny. It's not leather. It doesn't feel like vinyl either. How the deuce can anyone possibly use this? No lock. No zipper. No buckle. No way to open this case. It's a gag. I'll bet that some of those college kids from town, sure, that's it. Judy did hear some sounds last night. The kids. And they left this <laughs> stupid bag. Ah, of course, Ace. Now, you'll get full credit. Yes, sir, boy. I'll tell Judy you found it. Now, right, come on. Let's, let's go back to the house. Come on. That you, Alex? Doc, hello. How's the arm? Not bad. Now, when are you going to take the stitches out? Oh, these days. Now, don't rush it. That's a mighty bad tear. Will you level with me? Shoot. Well, well, will the arm be as good as new? Well, not 
really. Some of the muscles were torn. Oh, you'll have movement, but there will be limitations. You were lucky that it's the left and not the right. Yeah, lucky. And you'll end up with a beautiful scar. Say, Doc, is Judy still there? She left about 30 minutes ago. Did she check out okay? Well, there, uh, there are some tests that will take a few days. But from what you could see... Well, that's the real reason I called, Alex. There, there, there is something? There is. Well, not serious. Yes and no. Oh, what the devil does that mean? Well, it's your heart. And, and before you jump to conclusions, listen. If she watches herself, obeys a special diet, there's no reason why she shouldn't live a normal span of life. Did... did you tell her? Well, only that it's a rather common condition that can be controlled. She's not alarmed, and she needn't be. Now, I mean this, Alex. I've seen patients like her do almost everything they used to do and go on and on. Almost. Oh, uh, Doc, last time you dropped by, let, let's see, that must have been at least a week ago. No more like ten days. By any chance, did you, did you leave something out here? Hmm? You aren't missing one of your black bags. Huh. I've only got one bag. What are you talking about? Uh, nothing, nothing. Doc, I think I hear Judy. Yeah, yeah, it is. Hey, she's driving kind of funny. I, I better hang up, Doc. Oh, Alex! Oh, oh. Easy now, oh. whatever it is, you're home. I, I'm so frightened. I, I, oh, sure. Just a few miles past the Clearwood Sanitarium. What? You know the big curve through the woods? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I slowed down. Well, would you rather talk about it a little later? You're, you're shaking all over. Now, come on inside, Judy. I'll, I'll make some tea. Come on. Yes. yes, like that inside with the walls around me. Oh, Alex. Yes? We're in danger, Alex. Oh, now, Judy. I saw him, I tell you. I saw him. Who? Death. Alex. I saw death. <laughs> You feel better now? Yes. Look, I can hold my hands out and they don't shake anymore. Now, maybe I ought to call the doc anyway. I... I guess you must think I... Oh, Alex. I was maybe a minute or so past the railroad bridge when I heard this thing. What thing? It was on the news. About a patient at Clearwood escaping. And, and you know, please notify if you see him and telephone number at all. Any description? Well, all I can remember was something about his being dressed all in black. Nothing more. Hear that? What? Siren? Police siren? Why, it could be a fire truck. Oh, yes, I suppose so. You've heard sirens before. Yes, I know, but... I know, but... But they're searching for him. I still don't know who him is, except he's one of those mental cases from Clearwood. Well, he was just standing by the side of the road. But first I could barely see him in the shadows, dressed in black as he was. Well, what'd he do? Nothing. Just stood there, looking. Didn't threaten you? And then he said something. It, it was like, I want to communicate with you. Yes, I think that was it. And you got out of there fast. Did he shout? No. His voice was soft and, and mild. And he said, communicate? You sure he used that word? Communicate, yes. It's a queer word to use, don't you think? I mean, most people would say talk. I want to talk with you. Communicate. I, I mean, I know what I heard. I looked up when I heard him, and... And by now he was in the sunlight, and... I could see him clearly, just a few feet away. Alex... He had no face. Now, oh, Judy. I know what I saw. There was no face. I'm not hysterical, and I saw him. Now, if you say so. Oh, but... why don't you believe me? Because yeah, I can't conceive of anyone without a face, that's why. <laughs> now, all right, let's, let's start from the beginning. Did you, did you see his eyes? No. Was he wearing a hat? Yes, a black one. Well, it could throw a shadow over his eyes so you couldn't see you couldn't see them. It's possible. Well, it has to be. How the devil could anyone... He could have been in an accident, surgery. But how would he... All right, let's 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 go on. Now, what what about his nose? No, I didn't see any. It could be the hat again. Mouth? His, 
his mouth, Judy. You, you see, if the sun was hitting over his shoulder, then there'd be a shadow from his hat. In that case, the mystery's over. You're trying to make me feel like a, a fool. I don't care what you or anyone else thinks, but I saw a man with no face. And you can know what you can do with your theory about the sun and the shadows. I don't know about flying saucers, and I don't take pills, and I don't smoke pot, or whatever they call it. And I'm not crazy in imagining things. For your information, Alex, my eyes are still 20-20, and they saw, oh, God help me, a man without a face. <laughs> Alex, what's this all about? I mean, meeting you down the road instead of at your house. I didn't want Judy to worry, Ben. Well, I'm a police officer and not one of those secret agents you see in the movies. Ben, she says she saw the patient from Clearwood. Is that why you got me out here like this? He escaped. You make it sound like he's Jack the Ripper. Because he's from Clearwood, you got the idea he's a raving homicidal maniac. Oh, sure. All they've got out there are a bunch of lovable folks who are just a little mixed up. Hmm. You're really upset. Never seen you like this. I uh, guess I didn't know how much until right now. Judy ran into him on that, that big curve near Clearwood. Uh, she wasn't the only one. We've had calls from all over. Funny, you get sober citizens see him at the same time and miles apart, and dress different. Happens every time. Take a hot day, mix in a little imagination. Now, this was real. Of course it was. And Judy's not, but she's not the type. Now, take my word for it, Alex. Every time something like uh, this naturally, happens... Naturally, they're, they're doing something about it, like cruising the highways, enjoying the scenery. I'll give him credit for enough brains to hide out. Oh, I suppose you want police officers out in the field. That's where they ought to be. Sure. We'll hire a couple of hundred extra. Won't that make the taxpayers jump for joy? <laughs> come here. What for? Now, come here. I won't bite. I want you to hear this. Now, this is five. This is five. Receiving five. Is that you, Ben? Over. Uh, look up something for me, will you? Over. Go ahead. Over. Uh, how many identifications we got on the Clearwood thing? Give me a second. Here it is. Ben, we got 12 so far. Over. Hear that, Alex? 12. Everyone's a positive, too. Point blank range. Over. What's the spread? Over. This will kill you. Nearest one is two miles. Longest is over 30. Over. See, Alex? Everybody sees what he wants to see. You still with me? <laughs> over. Yeah, right here. Over. Something you might be interested in. Over. Standing by. One of the boys here says it must be some kind of a... Calls it mass hysteria or something. About half the audience claim this guy is nothing like anything you or me ever seen. Like how? Get to it, will you? Well, they say they had a close look and that he ain't got a face. Like you and me. A man without a face. Judy is not the only one. But think for a moment. In this last part of the 20th century, and its attendant wonders and discoveries, what is true and what is unreal? Is there anything no longer possible? Is there? I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Well, the doubting Alex knows that there's nothing wrong with his wife's power of observation. She did see a man. And though he does have a face, there is something missing. A mouth. Result of an accident? Or is he a mutation? A gruesome congenital result? Or perhaps from out of this world? 
Let's join Alex and see if we can find out. This is Alex Harper calling. Could you connect me with the director of the sanitarium, please? Rich is here. I'm sorry to bother you, doctor. I'm Alex Harper. I have a place on Route 36, about eight miles from you. Yes, of course. I've passed by there quite often. What can I do for you, Mr. Harper? Doctor, I hope you won't laugh or anything, but I have a couple of questions about this fellow who broke out of your place. Oh, uh, Michael. Uh, that's his name? Michael? M Michael what? Well, now, we have no full identification. He gave us only his first name. But he was a patient at Clearwood, wasn't he? Yeah, in a sense. Was he or wasn't he? Well, only for one day. You see, Michael is a rather unique case, most unique. In all my years, I've, I've never seen anything like him. Look, I have to speak low because I don't want my wife to hear. She's in the kitchen and she's plenty upset already about your Michael. Oh, she's, she's seen him? Where? Have, have you notified the police? Well, I, I thought I'd speak to you first. She saw him and, and from what she says, she's either crazy or hysterical. And I can tell you, she's not either one of them. Well, Michael is, uh... Well, he, he, he's different. Different? That, that what you call a guy without a face? Without a... Oh. Oh, no, no, no. He, he has features. The eyes, nose, and the rest of it? Well, of course. Well, then my wife, she didn't... She didn't see what she says she saw? Oh, no, I haven't said anything like that, Mr. Harper. What I was referring to was his appearance, not his powers of reasoning or social behavior, because, quite frankly, he didn't talk to us. Outside of his name, we couldn't establish contact with him at all. Well, what about his, as, as you call it, the appearance? Uh, Michael has no mouth. From what we can tell, he was born without a mouth. Now, we don't know how he communicates, but... Or if he does at all, or how he manages to ingest food. Truth is, he wrote his name on a scrap of paper. You see, Michael may be something quite... quite new to our world, Mr. Harbour. Perhaps one of a kind. Uh, maybe he's, uh, 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 oh, what's the word I'm hunting for? Mutation? Yeah, that's it. I hope to God that he is what he appears to be. A freak. A one-time thing. But suppose he's only the first, the beginning of... perhaps a... a new kind of man. Alex! Be right in. Uh-oh. What were you... Oh, no. Oh, it's only in... Old ashtray, no big loss. How'd that happen? I got up when you called, and this case was on my lap, and it fell off. Well, you'll pick up the pieces, won't you? I've got something cooking. Sure. Hey, it's open. Judy! Judy, the bag is open. What's open? Oh, well, never mind. Well, what do you know? Hey, will you look at this? Uh, now, Alex, you want me to ruin supper? Well, it's almost like a miracle. You see, Ace found this bag, and I couldn't figure out a way to open it. Just... It looks just like a, the kind of bag Doc Stevenson carries. You don't have to be an engineer to open one of those. Oh, yeah? Well, this one has no lock or no nothing. And when I just dropped it and broke the ashtray, it opened up. And look what's in it. Let me see this eighth wonder. All these bottles. Hey, that's strange. Hmm? Doesn't feel like glass. Plastic? Mm-mm. Not plastic either. I never felt anything like this. Well, what's the difference? Say, here's one that says cardiac arrest. And this one's cerebral occlusion and lymphoid carcinoma? Agina pectoris and respiratory carcinoma, spinal sarcoma. And, and, and this one at the end, tuberculosis. Alex, what, what is all this? What are these pills? Well, how should I know, except, except that they're important? Hmm. Here's one that's different. Or cuts, bruises, and dermatological eruptions. It looks like talcum powder. It obviously belongs to a doctor. But what a doctor? What does that mean? Have you ever heard of a doctor who has a bag full of pills that cures heart disease and cancers, not to speak of stroke? The worst plagues of mankind, and here in our hands are the answers to what science has been searching for? 
Cures? <laughs> Those pills aren't cures. Who ever heard of a pill curing cancer, heart disease, or stroke? Well, uh, wait, why not? Think a moment. Look at this bag, Judy. Ever seen anything like it in your life? I tell you, I don't understand it. I don't know where it came from, but it's, it's, it's like nothing on this earth. And these pills, now go on and laugh if you want to. But I know they can do what their labels say. Now, I can't prove it, but I know. All right, dear. If you want to think that, you go right on. I've got dinner to make. Now, don't patronize me. Alex, aren't you carrying this a little too far? You don't seem to realize what we have here. And you do. Those things could be dangerous for all you know. Oh, my God. Now, how can I prove... Whoa. Wait, there is a way. And right now, here, help me. Here. No, don't, Alex. All right, then I'll get these bandages Please. off myself. Uh, I, now, I'm begging you. Now, the doctor now, said I, that... It's kind of awkward. Now, get scissors and, and cut some of this away. Now, get it. I won't be part of this... this stupidity. Now, you've lost your now, mind. Are you going to help me or not? Now, once I get the bandages off, I'm... I'm only going to put some of that powder on the stitches and on the skin where it's so red. That's all. A little powder. Well, now, what can happen? What? Honey... Don't you realize what this is all about? If this should work, and it will, you'll see. Then those pills for cancer and, and heart... See now? Alex, these things happen in stories, but not... It's... No, it's for you. You'd be well. Don't you understand? When Doc told me what he'd found, that, that you had a heart condition, I... But, but, but he assured me it was nothing to worry oh, about. Oh, the old bedside matter. He wanted to break it to you easily. Did he tell you that it no, was... No, I can't say that, but how can heart disease be anything but serious? So when, when somehow the bag opened and I saw what was inside, I, I couldn't think of anything but that you could be cured just like that. Oh, honey, I love oh, you. Oh, Alex, I guess it's all right. Where are they... Here they are. That's better. Right, now, now, careful now. You don't want to want to cut those stitches. Good. That's that's fine. Oh, the skin is so red. Sorry, you look a mess. I know. Mm. Now, please give me that bottle of powder or whatever it is. Alex. Now, please. Here. Hmm. The bottle is warm. Well. Hot day. Oh, it feels as though it's it's generating the heat itself. Isn't that wild? Judy, will you do the honors? Just just shake some all over. All right. That that should do it. A little more. It's all covered. That ought to do it. Feel anything? Not yet. How long do you think it'll take? <laughs> that is, if it Well, it it hadn't even been thirty seconds, I I suppose it'll uh, take a little time, though. I, I didn't expect a miracle like uh, like that water into wine kind of thing. The powder's got to work its way in. Well, I'll, I'll get some fresh gauze. You still ought to keep it covered. Yeah, that, that might not be a bad idea. I wonder what's bothering Ace. Oh, there he is. <gasps> Alex. What? Ah. What is it? Look over there. It's him. The one ace is running after the man I saw on the road. The man without a face. Right, I'm going after him. Now, lock the door after me and call the police. Oh, no, don't go. Let the police handle it. Uh, he's heading out to the East Fields. Now, call him. Tell him. He might be dangerous. He... No, I, I won't get too close. Just enough to keep track of him till the police get here. Oh, just thinking of him. I'm so frightened. Oh, no, no. There's no need to be. I, I didn't want to tell you before, but I talked to the head of Clearwood and this guy, this, this Michael is his name. He's a little queer, but he's not dangerous. Anyway, there's nothing to worry about as long as you stay inside. Twice in one day. Why here? He's not after you. What reason would he have? I suppose not, but somehow... <gasps> Alex! That's what he wants! The bag! The medicines! It must be his bag. He's come for it. Him? A doctor? It has to be. That's the only explanation. Oh, I'll give you another. He's escaped and wants to stay off the main roads. After all, you spotted him, didn't you? He just wants to get as far from Clearwood as he can. By chance, he was cutting across our place when he ran into Ace. Now, look. Now, I'm going to go after him before he gets too far. Remember, the police and the door. Now, don't get your dander up, Alex. We've known each other too long for that. 
Now, you just show me again where you saw this fella last. Ben, I know that a good cop ought to be skeptical, but by God, I saw him run under that tree, then up and over that fence. Now, why would I lie? I don't mean to make out that you did any such thing. It's just so darn queer. Huh? Well, look for yourself. Look at what? That's it. Nothing to see. Oh, come on now. Let's stop this rustic routine. Mm. No footprints. Prints? Feel the ground. Soft, isn't it? So it's soft. Then where are the prints? You say he was running? Yeah, with Ace right behind him. A man running puts down a mighty heavy print. Heavier than if he was walking. He could have gone across these rocks? Mm, could have. But nobody could jump from rock to rock. Why, it must be 20 feet between them. Yeah. Unless he can fly. Must be clear out of the county by now. Now, how do you come to that conclusion? Ace. That's why. If we were anywhere near that there Michael, we'd be here an Ace. You know he's always been a noisy dog. Well, he could have lost interest and run off after a rabbit or a woodchuck. Yeah, maybe. Something right over there, Alex. To your right. Grass is too tall. I can't see a thing. Something black. This side of that thorn bush. I see it. He's wearing black. Everything black. Yeah. Come on out. Stand up. Now, I'm telling you for the last time. Put up your hands and come out. Hmm. Now, I'm going to fire a shot in the air, and if that doesn't fetch you, I'll put the next one into you. Ben, I don't think he's coming out. He won't shoot, will you? Just you watch. But he isn't armed. How do you know that? Well, if he was, he could have cut you down. Standing up, you make a beautiful target. Hmm. You got something there. I'm going in. I got an idea. He's so scared he can't move. Now, don't be stupid. Come back. Oh, my God. Of all the stupid things... Oh, I... it's Ace. Our dog. He's dead. Yeah. Gee, I'm sorry. Oh, there... There isn't a mark on him. Look at his face. Oh, it's horrible. If I didn't know better, I'd... I'd say that something scared that dog to death. <laughs> no medicine for fear. The icy chill that reaches out with frigid fingers to clutch the heart. The shadow of the inexplicable Mr. Michael hovers close by, and the lives of at least two people will be irreparably altered. We'll find out how when I return shortly with Act Three. family dog has died mysteriously, and the presence of Mr. Michael is as real as if he had knocked at the front door. Now the ride back to the farmhouse is a silent one, broken only by a few perfunctory remarks as it comes to an end. I'll keep in touch, Alex. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, you see anything, give us a call. Yeah. Mighty sorry about Ace. Well, uh, see you, Alex. You okay? Okay. Is that Ben in the police car? Yeah, it's Ben. Oh, you should have invited him in. I guess so. I, I just didn't think. Judy, Did he get away? The man who... Uh, oh, Ben thinks he's out of the county. Oh, I hope so. Judy, we were following Ace. Alex, and I... look at it. It's a miracle you were talking about. I met about. Ben and we were over in the Call North the doctor. Field. He'll drop everything and come out when you tell him. <laughs> and I was the one who didn't believe. I, I, I don't understand you. I thought you'd be jumping up and down because what you said would happen did. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Huh? Don't you hear me? Alex, look at your arm, your left arm. My God, my God in heaven. I didn't believe it. Oh, what an idiot I was. <laughs> Talcum powder. <laughs> you want to know the truth? <laughs> I thought you'd flipped. <laughs> Absolutely over the deep end. 
<laughs> Telling me to shake powder off. Hey, I'm moving it, you see? Like it was before the accident. Oh. It's like a young arm. It's brand new. Yahoo! Uh, no more pain. No more stitches. No more pain. <laughs> he believe it. He won't believe it. Oh, Dr. Stevenson, boo. Boo on all yeah, doctors. Here. Hey, what do they know anyway? Uh, you'll never, never have full use of that arm. However, if you followed my advice, <laughs> you'll think I borrowed another arm. Look. Not a single scar. It looks like the skin was never even scratched. Oh, it's so wonderful. Oh, and I love you. You won't be angry with me. Oh, how could I be? And why should I be? The, the doctor's bag, the one Ace found. Yeah, the bag. Where is it? I have it. Well, get it. Now that we have proof, Judy... Judy, you're going to be as good as new. The proper pill and no more heart condition. Hear that, world? Listen, oh, gracious universe. Well, it's on the desk. Well, what are we waiting for? Alex. Look, if it works like the powder, we'll stand them all on their collective ears. Judy. Judy, the bag is locked again. I was so full of doubts. When you left, I looked at the bag and... Oh, Alex, to me it was the embodiment of everything evil. And I wanted to destroy it, so... So I picked it up and... And somehow I pushed the flap down. Well, no, I can't. I can't tell where where one part fits into another. See, I I, I can't find a seam anywhere. Well, I, I, I think it was just about here. Try 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 there. No, no, that's no use. I'll drop it on the floor. Maybe like last time. Still in one piece. I'll try again. No use. Oh, forgive me. Right now we gotta figure out a way to get the bag open so we so we can get you a heart pill. Alex, you have an electric drill. I can try. I'll take it out to my workbench in the barn. Well, why not wait until morning? It's getting dark now. Uh, no time like the present. Now, give me a shout when dinner's ready. If I'm lucky, I may be back before then. I'll get this thing open if I have to use dynamite. Oh, here it goes. Ah, nuts. The instrument will not achieve penetration. Who? Do not be alarmed. I mean you no harm. You know who I am? Michael. I am he. Don't, don't come any closer. There is nothing to fear. There is no belligerency in me. I have a gun. This rifle is loaded. That is a weapon? Yes. It can bring an end to consciousness? Easily. It is not my intention to cause any fear. But you have. You killed my dog today. The creature threatened me. And I did not intend to. I did not realize how weak it was. A simple mental probe and... I regret the occurrence. Haven't you ever seen a dog before? They are... Images in books and pictures. There are no dogs or animals where you come from? There is barely enough room for the higher forms of life. We have never learned to curb our reproductive powers, it seems. Well, where is this place you come from? The, uh, this is Earth, the third planet from the sun, I, I think. <laughs> I know. It is my home, too. Oh, that, that can't be. I exist. But not of your time. Not of my time? Time runs on. There is a past, a present, and a future. The threads are simultaneous. Oh, now, you don't expect me to I believe. I am fatigued from my experience, and I must return. If you will kindly give back my case to me, the one you have on the bench. That's yours? That is why I have come. It was misplaced lost. But now that I have found it... Well, there's no argument about it, Doctor. It's yours. I am not a doctor. Not in the context of usage in your time. Uh, well, uh, who cares? Listen, the case was opened. I, I don't know the how. The mechanism but... is faulty. I must exchange it. You... You did not utilize any of the contents. Well, only some of the powder in the bottle labels. Yes, 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 I am aware. But I did a fantastic job with my arm. Look at it. Look at it, Michael. Would you believe that only a few hours ago it was a match? I am well aware of the powers inherent in the powder. But now, please, give me the case. You cannot open it, for the key 
is in my hands alone. Uh, uh, stay back. I, I must open it once more. Or you will. I've, I've got to have something from it. Comprehend this. My time is far in your future. The compounds are off. Another time. Different metabolisms. Evolution has caused basic changes. Uh, but the powder worked on me. It is probably the single exception. I don't believe you. Look, I'll give you anything. Money. How, mu how much do you want to open it? I shall prove my point to you. You must be aware of the differences in our physiognomies. You mean your, your, your face? Exactly. The lack of an aperture above the jawbone. You call it a mouth. Have you wondered then how we are communicating? I have no mouth, for we ingest our nourishment through an osmotic process unknown to you. And if I have no mouth, then how do we communicate? Well, I... You, I, you are moving your mouth, and I, I hear. I, on the other hand, send my thoughts to you through my mind. You see this is so? Yes. Yes. Think of it in this manner. I am you in a distant time. You should be able to comprehend then that medicinal compounds of my time may not be of benefit in yours. The difference is it, in us, are too great. Uh, but my arm... You were lucky to have chosen that particular container. My wife will die unless she has a pill. Just, just one pill. I have explained why you cannot have a pill. Uh, open that, open that bag or I'll kill you. Now, I mean it. My demise will not help you comprehend. An unusual accident took place. A time warp misfunctioned. And I found myself in your time. The accident must have disturbed my balance. And I wandered from this place, leaving my case behind. We have communicated sufficiently. I feel joyous that your infirmity responded to the powder. But I cannot allow you to maintain possession of the case any longer. Stop. I took a vow to protect it with my life. I must fulfill that vow. Give it to me. Give... I can't hold you for a while. You don't realize it, but you told me how to open this. You said the key is in your hands. It'll open to your handprints. Now, now your right hand on the bag. Oh, uh, nothing. Well, maybe, maybe both at once. There. I'll, I'll try, I'll try one on each side. Yes, yes, I've got it. Judy, Judy, it's open! <laughs> Come on, Michael, wake up. Come on, you're okay. A piece of ice on your uh, cheek should help. Uh, uh, That's it. Easy now. Fine. Fine. What? How do you feel? I thought your aim was to... to extinguish me. No, 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 no. I only wanted one of those heart attack pills. You see, my wife Judy has a heart condition. Well, well, she had a heart condition. Thanks to you, we don't have to worry about that anymore. This other person, your wife... She ingested the dosage? It's like a flash. After she saw what happened to my arm, she had no hesitation. If I could only have just one of each of those different pills, I wouldn't have had... I have communicated to you that I am not a physician, yet you have refused to accept the truth. You insist I am practiced in medicine because... I possess a case apparently similar to physicians of this time era. Well, you can't blame me for thinking you that. You will not communicate. You will listen. You poor man. Poor, poor individual. Let me inform you of my, my profession. I am proudly the highest ranking Exterminator. Exterminator? Precisely. I communicated earlier that in my era, there is barely enough room for all who inhabit the planet. Therefore, exterminators trained to eliminate painlessly and quickly. Oh, no. The pills, as you refer to the compounds, are each a dose.
dose of death. The case is full of death. The tools of my oh, trade. Oh, no. All except the container of first aid powder which I keep for my personal needs. Fortunately for you, for you are now thoroughly healed <laughs> up. But the rest... Uh, but the, the, the labels, the, the, the tuberculosis, the heart attack, the cancer... The compounds act within a matter of minutes. Bringing death, of course. Instead of resorting to the crude murders of earlier, more primitive eras, it is more comforting for the family to report that one of its members has died of cancer, heart disease, or any one of a dozen other diseases. Oh, murder. Elimination. Murder. My case. Please. You must you must have an antidote. If if you make a mistake, there must be some Elders way you are not committed. I am sorry for your bereavement. <laughs> I shall depart. Be assured, there was no pain. No. <laughs> Naturally, there were those who were skeptical. A man from another time who conversed through telepathic means? Much too fantastic. Alex Harper would look with infinitely sad eyes and agree that it was too much to expect anyone to believe his story. Except for one thing. And he would bare his left arm. Explain this, he would say. And if you can, I will agree that I dreamed the entire nightmare. I'll be back shortly. In a ditty from a well-known operetta, the words are, Things are seldom what they seem. Skim milk masquerades as cream. And as you have just heard, words alone may tell only part of the real story. But for stories guaranteed to increase your pulse beat, my suggestion is the Radio Mystery Theater. Our cast included Patrick O'Neill, Marion Seldes, Ian Martin, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. KIXI dial 91 AM or 96 FM, Seattle. CBS News. More talks for Secretary of State Kissinger today in Syria before he takes off for Israel. This is Ann Crosman reporting on the CBS radio network. Kissinger continues talks with Syrian President Assad today. Kissinger reportedly believing he will be given a list of Israeli prisoners of war to deliver to officials in Jerusalem. The secretary is scheduled to fly there later this morning on his Mideast peace-finding mission. Kissinger is trying to get Israel and Syria to negotiate troop disengagement on the Syrian front. More news in a minute. When you drink beer, do you tilt the glass for long, hearty swallows? Or just tip it and sip it? Well, sipping's the thing for wine, but Budweiser beer is a hearty drink, brewed for zest and character. The best way to enjoy Bud is to drink it, not chug-a-lug, 
just man-sized beer drinker swallows. That's when that famous Budweiser taste, smoothness, and drinkability really come through. Smoothness and drinkability that come only from natural carbonation and exclusive beechwood aging. Smoothness and drinkability, too good for any half-hearted sipping. So drink up. You'll see that brewing beer right does make a difference. And that when you say Budweiser, you said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. A United Airlines flight on its way from San Francisco to New York made an unscheduled landing at the Milwaukee airport yesterday after a passenger grabbed a dinner knife and jumped up from his seat. Lieutenant Daniel Richardson of the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Department tells us what happened after that. People in the area where this uh, man suddenly uh, jumped up from his, uh, his seat and arbitrarily began uh, stabbing people in the area, two people which sat right alongside him who initially uh, subdued him along with two other passengers. And he was taken out of the area to a safe part of the airplane by the first officer on the ship and uh, these uh, passengers. Nobody else on the uh, plane uh, became involved in it. Nobody can say what uh, took place. All we can say is that uh, he jumped up and began yelling uh, uh, things such as Nazism, Nazism, uh, uh, things of this nature. The man is identified as Robert Slutsky of Long Island. He and two other passengers received superficial wounds. Slutsky will be charged later today with assault with a deadly weapon. The AAA says that its latest weekly check shows that Atlantic Coast states and parts of the Pacific Northwest continue to be hardest hit by gasoline shortages. The AAA says the situation seems to be better in the North Central states. In Chicago, there's been a court decision of interest to everyone who buys and sells gas. Ralph Howard of CBS station WBBM has a report. The first gasoline dealer in the nation to be charged by the IRS with price gouging has been found guilty in federal court. The judge found station operator Sam McBride guilty of two counts of gas gouging and contempt of court. McBride was fined $17,000. At the time, the IRS accused McBride of forcing customers to buy a rabbit's foot or a form for making out a will before they could buy gasoline. The price worked out at times to be as much as $2 a gallon. One of those trying to buy gasoline was an IRS agent, and she's the one who filed charges. McBride also happens to be a Chicago policeman. Ralph Howard for CBS News, Chicago. The Los Angeles Times says that John Ehrlichman, the president's former domestic affairs advisor, has turned down an offer from special Watergate prosecutor Jaworski for plea bargaining. The Times quotes friends of Ehrlichman as its source for the report. Ehrlichman is charged with conspiracy, burglary, and perjury in connection with the break-in at the office of Daniel Ellsberg's psychiatrist. Yesterday, the president's lawyers said that Mr. Nixon would refuse to obey a subpoena from a California court to testify in Ehrlichman's trial. The lawyers claim that no state can constitutionally command a president to do anything. The president has asked top Republican leaders to the White House for breakfast this morning. Among those expected, Vice President Ford and George Bush, chairman of the Republican National Committee. A new ransom has been demanded for the stolen Vermeer painting in London. On Tuesday night, a man with a West Indian accent telephoned a London newspaper demanding free heating oil for old people in North London. The caller reportedly said, We're going to ask Mrs. Harold Wilson to get the money for us. She is the wife of Britain's Labour Party leader. This demand comes on top of an earlier demand for a little more than a million dollars worth of free food for poor people on the Caribbean island of Grenada. The London city government has refused to give in to that demand. Some art experts say the painting is priceless. CBS News has learned that Samuel Bike, the man shot by police last Friday while trying to hijack a Delta Airlines jet at Baltimore International Airport, had planned to crash the plane into the White House if his hijacking had been successful. Newspaper columnist Jack Anderson says that Bike sent him a tape recording with the outline of those plans. Anderson reports that Bike dubbed his plan Operation Pandora Box and that Bike was very angry about the Watergate affair. Bike mailed the tape to Anderson on the day of the attempted hijack. Police say that Bike shot and killed an airport security officer and the plane's co-pilot and then shot himself dead after being wounded. This is Ann Crosman, CBS News.